don't really have too much to say. I just wanted to say welcome everybody for coming. Uh, and we have one big announcement we're making that uh, B-Sides Charleston is now an official 501c3. So we are now in a nonprofit here in Charleston. So we are very excited about Take Us. So uh, come give back to the community, help us grow. Uh, let's show people that Charleston really has some cool stuff going on with it. And uh, without further ado, I'll let you introduce yourself because no one speaks better about themselves than themselves. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Enjoy. Don't look at the wires. Yeah, there's. Hey, everybody. I'm Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, the one problem I have is they've told me I have to stand somewhat behind the podium, so I'm trapped. Right? Uh, I'm one of those people that I wander all off, so if I wander and you're watching on the video, oh well. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about Security Circus. This is. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about Security Circus. This is something that uh, I've ranted about quite a bit on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, and you guys get to sit here in a room and hear me rant again. Um, I feel like we as an industry are shooting ourselves in the foot, and that's probably not a good idea, especially since what we do is so important. At least I think it is. I may be biased, you know. I'm a greedy capitalist, and my entire business depends on people thinking what we do is important. So I keep trying to push that motto. So I'll give you a little bit about myself. Uh, basically, I'm the head nerd at Scare Ideas, a company we formed accidentally just over five years ago. Uh, it was one of those things where people just kept calling and saying, hey, will you do this on the side? And I kept saying, yes. My wife says I have a problem with that. So, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, we can do that, no problem. Uh, I've been around the IT field for too damn long. I'm an old fart. I started about 25 years ago. Started in security about 15. Eight years ago, I became a consultant. Now, Secure Ideas, we do red team. We are part of the problem, probably, right? Uh, our job is to come in, beat you up, tell you you suck, and leave. It is the world's best job, right? <laughs> People ask all the time, like, hey, do you fix them? No. <laughs> well, we point at you and laugh, but, you know, one of those things. We also do training and all that kind of stuff. I'm an IONS faculty member. If you don't know about IONS, it's awesome, but again, I'm biased. I've written a whole bunch of courseware. For example, I wrote the web pen testing curriculum and the mobile security curriculum for SANS Institute. That's what people, you know, people seem to like it, you know. One of those things, I haven't been with them for about two years now, so I guess that's okay. Um, and. I have what it, my wife says is the nerdiest thing I've ever done. I pointed out to her that she met me when I was 26, so she doesn't know. Um, but I'm a member of the 501st. We are a Star Wars costuming charity group. So there's about 8,000 members worldwide. We build screen accurate costumes, hence the clone trooper helmet I didn't want to leave on the table. And um, I knew if I left it on the table, I'd, like, I'd look out in the audience and somebody would be wearing it. So I'm like, okay, no, that's not happening. Uh, so we build screen accurate Star Wars costumes and raise money for charity. We go to do hospital visits and things like that. You've probably seen us around if you've been anywhere and there were Star Wars characters there. Uh, last year, my understanding is we raised $12 million for charity worldwide. So it's one of those things where everybody laughs when you say Star Wars costuming and then you say $12 million and they go, oh. <laughs> Maybe that's reasonable, right? So, and you'll hear a lot about my kids because I think that my kids are one of the reasons why security is such a big deal to me, right? Uh, being the guy whose oldest daughter, who's now 13, but when she was nine, her identity was stolen because the hospital she was at was breached and they got her social security number, her date of birth, and everything else. Now, of course, it's okay because we got the letter that said they take security very seriously, um, <laughs> which I'm sure they do, right? Um, and they gave her a year of free credit monitoring. The <laughs> problem with that was she was nine. She wasn't authorized, you know, eligible to actually sign up for the free credit monitoring. So that's a scam. The hospital paid for a year. She couldn't use it. So they still got paid. They still got paid, right? That's a business you want to do, right? Here, pay me for something you can't use. Thanks. <laughs> but oh well, right? But security is a big topic. I mean, there are actually TV shows dedicated to what we do. You know, I thought we had it made when, in the State of the Union address, they mentioned cybersecurity. And yes, by the way, for the people who are cringing, I've given up fighting on the word cyber, right? I, I know, okay. <laughs> Coffee. And, um, right? 
But I thought when the State of the Union mentioned cybersecurity, it was like, wow, we're real. We, we, we matter. And, and now there's a CSI cyber, which I've not seen. <laughs> I've heard it's awful. <laughs> but, I mean, come on. We couldn't have expected much. If you ever watched any of the CSI shows, I believe that most investigators turn on lights in the rooms they're investigating. But for some reason in the TV show, they never do. Always irritated me when I watched the show. It's like, turn on a light, you could find the evidence better. But, you know. So, but everybody talks about security. Everybody does. I, you know, I knew we had a problem when my grandfather asked me about security. Right? When my father-in-law is talking about malware and phishing and things like that, not understanding any of it, but you know, he asks about it. Right? Uh, oh, by the way, I gotta warn you, um, I'm full of jokes and tangents. Right? I'm full of lots of things, my eyes are brown. Um, I do wanna point out I did not say good jokes. I just said I have jokes. Like, okay, current favorite joke, do you guys know why Walmart wasn't hacked? It's not a target. Exactly, it wasn't a target. <laughs> I got a bucket list item. I got to introduce the CIO of Walmart, and I told that joke in his introduction. He didn't shake my hand. <laughs> right? Like, hey, he went like this and walked around like, whoa. So, but security is a big deal, right? Everybody talks about it. Everybody's worried about it. We have PCI, you know, the you must be this tall to ride the internet. We have HIPAA, which is spelled with one P, not two. But there's also tons of issues. Every time we turn around, somebody is announcing a new flaw, right? We, somebody just said it to me this morning, right? We're, a, we're an industry run by Google searches, right? Every, and I thought it was excellent. He's right, you know? It, it, that is how people find out about us. And, and one of the things that the security field does is we try to drive as much attention. And in many cases, we do it in the wrong way. Right? There's this idea that, well, if I hack it, people will pay attention to me. Right? If I attack that system, if I find this flaw, I must be important. Right? And it's not. And, and the worst part is, every single time we do this, when we start to go after systems that aren't ours, systems that we don't have permission for, systems that we don't control, we're actually causing more problems than we're helping. And that's not a popular opinion. Right? As, as you can tell by the Twitter replies when I say it. Right? It's amazing how upset people get when you tell them that their job sucks. Right? What you're doing is wrong. <laughs> what we're all doing is wrong in so many ways. And, and we make our jobs more difficult. And one of the problems that we have to address, and this is one of the reasons why stunt hacking, and I, I really don't like that term, right? because most stunt hackers don't have airbags. And uh, well, in the Jeep they did, I guess. But, um, sorry Charlie. We have to figure out ways to protect ourselves. And protecting ourselves includes knowing where the flaws are. Right, it's one of the problems is, if I don't know where the flaw is, how can I protect it, right? And the example I always give, because we've done such a good job of telling people that what we do is important, but we don't do a really good job of explaining why or what the threats are, you know, years ago I was teaching this class and I'm teaching people how to crack passwords, right? And I got a guy in the room, and smart guy, and he says to me, I'm not worried about people cracking passwords. I'm like, why not? He's like, because I've got the strongest password. I'm like, really? That's awesome. Let's not point out the fact that he used the word password singular, right? So he has the world's strongest password. So I say to the dude, I say dude way too often for somebody who doesn't surf, but I say, dude, what is it? And he told me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a problem, right? And I'm like, wait, it was a four letter word and it was a name. So I look at the guy and I'm like, how can you possibly think that's the world's strongest password? He's like, Kevin, I'm 52 years old and that was my dog's name when I was five. Nobody knows my dog's name from when I was five. And you know something, we laugh, right? Because we know what the attack is. We know what people are doing with accounts and passwords and usernames. But in his mind, the way he understood it was that somebody was gonna go, I'm gonna hack him. 
and they were going to target him, and they were going to go after his system, and after his computer, and after his account. And while I won't sit here and tell you it was a strong password, I will agree that if that was the threat, if that really was the attack, that's stronger than you would think, right? Again, not a strong password, but stronger than you would think. So I sit there and I explain to the guy, no, dude, that's not what it is, right? This is the attack. We do that. And by the way, we need to stop saying dictionary list because they're not dictionaries. They're lists of strings that could be passwords. And I know that's harder to say, <laughs> right? But the problem is people go, my password's not on a dictionary. It's B, four, five, backwards, three. That's an E, by the way. <laughs> Capital B, at, at symbol, one L. That's not in a dictionary. But we all know it spells baseball, right? We all know every password cracker we use would do that password, right? But they don't. So I'm explaining this to the guy, and I'm like, dude, this isn't how it works. You know, we do this, this, this. This is how the attack works. And as I'm talking about it, his forehead actually started to sweat. <laughs> I did not know your forehead could sweat, right? And he got all freaked out, and he ran out of the room. About 45 minutes later, the dude walks back in. Like I said, way too often, I say dude, right? It's like everybody else says, um, I say dude. But uh, so the guy's like, comes back in, and he's visibly shaken. And at a breaking point, I walk over, and I'm like, yo, you OK? He's like, man, you, you scared the shit out of me. By the way, PG-13. But uh, <laughs> he says, you scared the shit out of me. I went and I changed my password. Again, singular. I said, really? Yeah. I said, did you pick a good one? He's like, yeah, I got a really strong one now. And I asked, what is it? And he told me. So I, <laughs> we fixed part of the problem, <laughs> right? But we do so much attention on the cool hack we pull off that we don't actually explain to people what the vulnerability means, what it means to them, right? And, and let's not even get started on what auditors look at, right? I, I, I am so tired of writing findings that say your website doesn't have autocomplete turned off. But I have to write it because all of the auditors will ding them for it. But I have to then say to the person, yes, I'm well aware of the fact that every modern browser ignores that setting. But because you don't have it, your auditor is going to have a hissy fit. And if I don't write it up, I'm the guy that missed a serious finding. <laughs> Anybody, let me ask, how many people in the room are pen testers? Ever done a pen test? Ever done a security test? Right? How many people in this room have ever compromised somebody because they visited a website that had autocomplete turned on? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, I didn't think so. I'll do the Bueller thing. Right? <laughs> right? Nobody. I don't know anybody who's been hacked by that. But PCI explicitly calls it out. What the hell? Right? Every auditor I've ever looked at says, autocomplete's on. That's bad. Really? What have you done with that? Nothing. But we worry about it. We freak out about it. We yell at people about it. Right? We have to start talking about how we find the vulnerabilities, how we understand them. But then we start talking about, well, what systems do you control? Right? Do you own the system? Are you allowed to test the system? I'll tell you right now, I was doing a test for a customer. I was using Amazon instances. And I know, right, Amazon instances, you're allowed to pen test them. But you have a form you have to fill out, right? And you give the date and where the pen test is coming from and the time frame and all this kind of stuff. And you send it to Amazon, and Amazon blesses it. Oh, yes, oh, well, you're allowed to pen test, right? But I didn't fill out the form because I wasn't testing Amazon. I was testing from Amazon. So we're doing a test, and of course, this was a test where we were, we were trying to determine if the person could detect us, right? After about a week and a half, they detected us, and uh, they reported us to Amazon. And I got the letter from Amazon saying, your instance may be compromised. No, it wasn't compromised. I was doing that, right? It was me. And so I wrote back and said, no, 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 it's not compromised. I was doing a pen test. And they write back and they're like, oh, if you pen test, Amazon, you have to let us know. And I'm like, oh, no, no, different direction. <laughs> right? I was pen testing from Amazon. And they're like, oh, no, you have to let us know. Really? Oh, OK. So you got to figure out, do you control it? Right? Do you own that iPod where you can root it or jailbreak it or whatever else you want to do with it? Right? Do you own that car you want to hack? You know, All of this stuff is things we have to talk about. And if we look at, we had to have some cool logos. Right? Vulnerabilities, I, I never knew we'd hit the day where we needed vulnerability logos. 
I'm waiting for theme songs. Wouldn't that be awesome, right? Here's a cool new vulnerability. Sing along with me. But, uh, <laughs> all right? Artists needed work, I guess. <laughs> you know, it's all the liberal arts degrees. But uh, they had to get logos for the vulnerabilities. And we start talking about it. Oh, man. How many people here were vulnerable to Poodle? Everybody. How many people cared? Yeah, it didn't seem it, right? By the way, let me ask, why Poodle? It's not scary. And I know somebody told me that Poodles are really mean dogs. They're just not scary looking, right? But okay, right? Shell shock, heart bleed, all these things. We have devices out there now. How many people here play around with a nest? Anybody? My wife won't let me get one. She said if I get one, I'll play with it when I'm on trips. And she's right. I'd be like in San Diego, turning the heat on in Jacksonville, <laughs> right? But we start seeing all these flaws. When these flaws came out and started being talked about, everybody, everybody talked about it, right? Oh, did you hear about Heartbleed? Yes. What are you gonna do about it? I don't know, patch, right? <laughs> That's what you do, right? Oh no. You guys see this one? I laughed my ass off at this. This was headlines just a few, maybe a month ago. These researchers, by the way, I hope you heard the italics and quotes. Um, these researchers in the UK determined that there's this kettle that it's wireless. It connects to your internet and you have a mobile app to, con now these are people that like tea, <laughs> right? Like, I need to make sure my tea's okay. But they have wireless kettles. And these researchers did some research and they determined, and I know, anybody who's been in the security long, industry longer than a week will know about this vulnerability. Um, if you de-auth a wireless client, and then you have a wireless antenna broadcasting the SSID that wireless device was connecting to that's stronger than the antenna that's in the building, the wireless device will authenticate to the fake access point. Now, most of us read that and go, no shit. <laughs> But in the UK, they had to research it. And they published an entire paper that said, oh my god, our tea is going to be screwed up. <laughs> and they did all this research, and it was in the headline, Brian Crow, I mean, BBC had an article about it. And I actually had customers call me and say, Kevin, what do we do about the kettles? <laughs> I don't know. Fill them with water? I, like, I'm not really clear how to answer that question. What, do you have one of these kettles on your network? And one of the guys is like, no. I'm like, well then, don't worry. Stop reading those articles. Stop clicking links. Because you know that's what they did, right? They clicked the link, it's awful. But don't click shit. But the one guy says to me, how would I know? How would you know what? How would I know if one of these kettles is on my network? So my only answer I can come up with is walk around and listen to the steam. Because <laughs> I'm hoping they whistle, right? Like, the, the tea kettles whistle? Look for that. But I'm, I'm trying to talk to these people. I'm like, this is not a new flaw. We have known for at least 200 years that wireless access point. I might be exaggerating. But this isn't where the problem is. Yet we got headlines. I had to waste time answering questions about tea kettles because somebody thought they were cool. Somebody thought, hey, I'll get it. And they did. They got attention. We're sitting here talking about it, right? But what real risk does that kettle have on you? And I know, I know, I know. I've heard this stupid ass argument. Well, if we can't program our kettles right, how can we program anything else right? And I, I, I hate to disagree, I'd like to believe, and I know many of my customers have proven me wrong, but I'd like to believe that people take security seriously in applications that require security. I honestly don't care if you can hack my tea kettle. I really don't. I don't care if you can hack my nest. That was the one that was fun, right? Do you remember that one? About a year ago, maybe? They can compromise the nest. How do they do it? Well, they have to take the nest off the wall. They have to flash the EEPROM or something. Like, it's one of these things, like, they have to actually 
physically touch the device to load a compromised firmware onto it. I don't know about you, but if people get into my house to touch my thermostat, I have bigger worries, right? They're in my house. I've got better things for them to grab than a nest that they could buy, right? But hey, we see a lot of people talk about self-testing. We should be able to test ourselves. The problem is a lot of people don't know how to test themselves, right? How many people here know how to run Nessus? That's what I thought. How many of you know how to validate what Nessus is doing on the script that it ran against that system? Fewer hands went up, right? How many people here know how to write their own Nasal scripts to test something custom for themselves? Even fewer hands. So we have to test ourselves, and I'm picking on Nessus just because it's a well-known popular device, not be, uh, software, not because there's anything wrong with Nessus, right? But most people don't know how to test themselves. And so because of that, a lot of people are like, you know what? For the greater good, I will fuzz the internet. We'll just attack anything we want. And the argument I've heard, right, from this guy. <laughs> How many people know Rob? Right? Robert Graham, really smart guy. Really smart guy. I respect this guy greatly. But I'll also point out that when Shellshock came out, he scanned the entire internet for Shellshock. And he posted this picture of a system that was vulnerable to Shellshock. Now, many of you may not recognize that. That's a Wireshark window, right? It's got the full IP address of the device that was vulnerable. And it's him running a ping command against himself. So the way he determined that the system was vulnerable is he ran an arbitrary command. Yes, when I talked to him on the internet via Twitter, because that's the best place to have an argument, um, his answer was it wasn't arbitrary. He meant to run ping. <laughs> this word you're using, you do not understand what it means, right? I, I, he's running commands on people's servers. Yes, I will acknowledge that running a ping command is not going to hurt anybody. But the guy who runs that system now has to respond, right? Because they don't know who Robert is. And even if they do, even if they know Rob, they don't know that all he ran was ping. The other problem we have is, I said to him, okay, so, okay, we'll ignore the fact that we now have declared an incident. We'll ignore the fact we have to do incident response. We'll ignore the fact that many of these companies then had to hire somebody to come in and determine if the systems were compromised. Right, let's ignore all that. How do we know you didn't do worse, right? Well, because I said I didn't. Okay, so let me ask you the next question. Did you tell this person they were vulnerable to shell shock? You're doing this for the greater good, right? You're scanning the entire internet to identify where all the vulnerabilities are. Have you notified a single one of the systems that were vulnerable? And the answer he gave was, no, they should come to my website and read my blog. Well, I didn't realize you were famous, right? I didn't know that paparazzi followed you around, that everybody knows you. Because that's the attitude, right? If you don't look at my site, if you don't read my blog, if you don't know what I'm doing, then that's your fault, not mine. We're not doing this for the greater good. In the most cases, this is an industry circle jerk. We all like to sit around and tell each other how cool we are. This is what I did today. What did you do today? Oh, well, I'm, I'm a badass. I scanned the entire internet. Screw you, hippie, right? That's not the way to do it. And we start seeing things, if I can hit the button. Do you guys remember this one? A researcher in Turkey took down the Apple Developer Network, right? If I remember correctly, it was down a week, week and a half, almost two weeks, right? Did not have access to it. I know this because I was testing some iOS apps during that time and couldn't get to the documentation that I was trying to research to help my client better develop their software because the Apple Developer Network was down. Pissed me off, right? This guy, he's like, and when you, know, you talk to him, when you talk to him on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, his answer was, well, you know, Apple shouldn't have been vulnerable. <laughs> okay, you're right. That building shouldn't have been flammable. Um, and his answer was, well, it's okay, well, fine, they shouldn't have been vulnerable. I'll agree with that. But why did you pull 100,000 records? Well, I had to prove the vulnerability existed. My answer to that is bullshit. Because I do pen tests all the time, and I don't pull 100,000 records to prove 
the site's vulnerable to SQL injection. I don't have to. I can run a count of the records I would have pulled and tell my customer, I could have pulled 100,000 records, right? Or I can show them, look, I do this, 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 the error message changes, you're vulnerable. Now, I'm not saying that I don't go and pull data. If it's in the rules of engagement and it's within scope, I will pull data. I'll pivot through that SQL server or Microsoft's or whatever, right, to get onto the internal network if that's in the rules of engagement. You know, there's this paper that has a signature that says, I'm not going to jail for doing this. It's a nice paper to have, right? This guy didn't have it. He didn't need to pull 100,000 records to prove it. He had to pull 100,000 records so he could do a cool blog post and get attention. That's why he pulled 100,000 records, right? But don't worry. <laughs> he posted this on Twitter. Apple, this is definitely not an hack attack. <laughs> I am not a hacker. I do security research. Here's my YouTube video. Now, a couple problems with this. We'll ignore the grammar. He's from Turkey. I'm assuming English isn't his first language, right? Um, but one problem, I'm not a hacker. It's amazing, last night I robbed a jewelry store. I held a gun on the guy, but I said, don't worry, I'm not an armed robber. He still gave me the money. <laughs> you can't self-identify as safe. You stole 100,000 records, guess what? You are a hacker. This is a hack attack. You may not be malicious, you may just be stupid, right? The other problem with this is, Apple is following this guy. At least according to this guy, because he didn't tag them in the tweet. His assumption is he is so important that Apple follows him, right? No, they don't. They don't follow any of us, probably, right? Except for Bill. Everybody follows Bill. Yeah. And of course, you know, he had to prove it further. <laughs> Google Play crashed right after that twice. Wasn't enough to crash it once, he had to do it twice. Why? Because he had to prove it was real. Mm, no. Again, all you're doing is dick waving. I mean, it's all it is. I'm bigger than you are, ha ha ha, look what I was able to do. I'm sorry. This is why we have a stereotype that we live in our parents' basement and eat pizza and can't get dates. And that's a stereotype. I'm not saying it's true, but this is why. Because we do stupid shit like this. And we encourage it, right? I'll guarantee you that there are people up on this slide, there are images up on this slide that you look at and go, asshole. And there are also people up there that you look at and go, yeah, he's awesome, right? Personally, weave. That's the first one for me, <laughs> right? It's just my opinion, not saying it's yours, right? My opinion, I immediately think, asshole. The jester? I look at it and go, yeah, do it, stay frosty, right? <laughs> but the reality is, there's not much difference between either of them from a perspective of what they're accomplishing, right? They, they're different people, they have different personalities, and Jester, of course, is an entire nation state in and of himself, my opinion, <laughs> right? But we look at these things anonymous. How many people here look at anonymous and go, yeah, that's a good thing, right? The one that I just came out with, that they just came out with, right, was uh, releasing KKK members. I don't know many people who can look at the idea that we're outing clan members that are in positions of power and think to ourselves, you know, those poor clan members. That's so sad. I, nobody says that except clan members, right? Most of us, I hope, look at it and go, yeah, shoot them. <laughs> Racism sucks, and I say that as a white guy, right? But the reality is most people go, yeah, that's fine. Go out, out clan members, that's a great idea. Well, except, you know, a week before they were supposed to release it, another asshole released a whole bunch of other names of people and pretended to be anonymous, because you know how you're anonymous? You say you are, right? Who's in charge of anonymous? Nobody. So the guy releases a list of names. A whole bunch of the names. Uh, one of them was a Hispanic mayor over in like LA or something, like California, LA, as if it's a 
entire state. Um, right, she's over in California, and she's this, according to the people who talk about it, she's this wonderful lady. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't know many Hispanic clan members, right? I just, it's a guess. But she was outed as a Klan member. And she posted, like, she posted this thing. And of course, my favorite part was she said in her post, right, please take this down. You know that doesn't work, Barbara Streisand. <laughs> it doesn't happen. But that got released that way. The same group, Anonymous, and I'm well aware that, like I said, anybody can be a member of Anonymous. For a while, they were releasing undercover police members' names, addresses, and phone numbers. And I don't care what your opinion of the police are, it's probably not a good idea. I have a friend whose husband was a cop. He was a detective. His name was released by Anonymous. There were people showing up at her house. There were people banging on the door, throwing stuff at windows, and she's there alone, right? Because he's on shift. He's working. So the question becomes, is that OK, right? And I don't know the answer. I really don't know the answer. I can't sit here and say, I'm OK with outing Klan members. I'm not OK with outing police officers. So some of the times, you're decent. How does that work? What's the morality we've decided on? What's the ethics we've decided on, right? So what do we do as people? Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not going to talk about what do we do as researchers, because I think the researcher title is bullshit. Most of us who call ourselves research, researchers are wrong. We're not doing research. Most. There is no research necessary to understand that putting a single quote in that form field caused a SQL error. That's not research. We've known about SQL injection for 90 years. Right? Again, small exaggeration maybe. Right? That's not research. That's not how research works. Research is finding a cure for cancer, right? Researcher, research is finding a brand new classification of vulnerability that nobody knew existed. That's research. Running Nessus or Acunetics against a website is being a script kitty, says the guy who regularly gets emails from my website because some dickhead ran Acunetics against it, right? Enjoy yourselves. That's not giving you permission to do it. <laughs> you probably don't want to piss off a pen testing company. Just an idea. <laughs> if you want to have fun, go click on exploits.secureideas.com and run every single thing it tells you to. But, <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about what to do as researchers, because in my opinion, you're not researchers. I get it. We want to find vulnerabilities, and I have no issue with that. I have no issue with buying a piece of software and testing it yourself in your own lab. I have no issue with buying a car and testing it yourself in your own lab. Your system, okay? But what do we do as the people who have to respond to this? What do we do as the people who have to manage the systems that are under attack? And how do we determine that the guy from Turkey isn't a hack attack, as he put it? How do we keep track of that? How can we possibly determine that? And I'll tell you that in most industries, us saying, ah, that's probably Rob, is not enough when we go to the management. It's not enough when we go to the auditors. It's not enough when the next breach happens and they say, why didn't you respond to the previous one? I assumed it was Rob. Why? That's what he does, right? I know his IP address. He's at 127.5.5.6, right? It's an evil hacker at that IP address. So what do we do? There's a number of options. This, of course, is the first option. I don't recommend this one, right? Panic. Run around screaming, ah, what the attack? Shut off the internet. It's always my favorite. Don't worry, we have the dark net. <laughs> I couldn't do it with a straight face. I tried. <laughs> Ooh, the dark net. That's when you browse the internet with the lights off. Yeah, it's like blind SQL injection. It's SQL injection, but you keep your eyes closed. But, so panic, right? Run around, this is what our management does. How many people here have worked for an industry, a company, and had the owner of the company or management come to you and say, are we vulnerable to something, right? 
my old boss, Mike Porter, always tells a story where he was there he, and this general walked in and the general said, how many false positives did we see today? And he's like, I, 10, right, whatever the number was. Good. How many false negatives did we see? None. Good. <laughs> right? Because uh, you know, the minute you see the false negative, it's not a false negative anymore. <laughs> It's just the way it is. It's like that vendor. You guys remember the vendor that used to advertise? I don't remember the name of them. Negative day protection? You guys remember they had t-shirts? They said negative day. Do you remember the vendor who it was? Oh man, we gotta pick on them. Because, I, like I loved it, right? Zero day, do we all agree that a zero day is a vulnerability that exists that there is no patch for? Right, that's a zero day, well, one definition of a zero day. So a negative day would be a vulnerability that doesn't exist. Pay me money, I guarantee you, I will protect you against all non-existent vulnerabilities. <laughs> and the best part is, it's agentless, it's cloud-based, awesome, right? Done. If you're not vulnerable to that attack, I will protect you against that attack. Right? That's what the vendor was basically announcing. Total different story. Right? But we could panic. Not a good idea. We could deny the problem. Can anybody say Cisco? Right? <laughs> Fire eye? No, it wasn't us. We weren't hacked. The picture for the people who don't know is Barbara Streisand's house. So it started the whole Streisand effect. I actually didn't know what the story was. I've used the term Streisand effect forever and never knew the story until I was writing this talk. I actually went out and researched it. Turns out some guy got in a plane and he photographed the entire coastline of California. And he posted it online, right? And Barbara Streisand or Barbara Streisand's people, I don't know, right? Somebody associated with Barbara Streisand said, Take that picture down. That's her house. We don't want people seeing it. Right. It's on the beach. <laughs> Boats see it. Right? So they asked her to take the picture down. Before they asked them to take the picture down, according to the website, six people had viewed that picture. Four of them were her lawyers. Or two of them. Either way, one or the other. Four or two were her lawyers before the cease and desist, right? The, before the takedown notice. After that, well, it's in my presentation, right? Like everybody went, oh, I don't want to see that picture. What is it? What's going on, right? And it's the Streisand effect. The minute you say, don't, don't look over there, I'm actually trying to figure out what kind of thing could we tell people to stop talking about secure ideas just to get us attention, right? Like that's marketing. But that's what happened with Barbara Streisand. FireEye did it. How many people here remember the black hat pictures and videos of Cisco ripping pages out of the black? I swear that's why black hat doesn't give printed manuals anymore, right? I, but there's video of the Cisco people ripping pages out of the, the conference guide. How many people here saw that talk after that, right? I got copies of this stuff. People were like, I've got one without the pages ripped out. It's worth money, right? Put them on eBay and stuff. It was crazy. But it got more attention to the vulnerability than letting the talk run would have gotten. The same thing, how many people here remember when Ashley Madison got hacked, right? What was Ashley Madison's first response? We weren't hacked. That's not our data. Yeah, it is, right? It is your data. Oh yeah, well, maybe we were hacked, but it wasn't that bad. Well, it was all our data. Yeah, I guess it was bad. Right, I mean, this is the process people go through. I remember back when I worked at In Guardians, right, Dan Kaminsky got hacked. You guys remember when Dan Kaminsky got hacked? We ran into a problem that one of our owners, uh, Jay, had actually used one of Dan's servers to do a pen test of one of our customers. And he hadn't cleaned up after himself. And I'm not revealing it, it's in the, you know, the information's available, right? And so when they dumped Dan Kaminsky's servers, there was a whole bunch of information about one of In Guardians' customers. Right? And it was like, oh, shit. What do we do? Well, the first reaction was, should we tell them it wasn't us? No, our name is right there. Right? I mean, it's a, you know, can't do that. And, and I mean, let's be honest. It wasn't a serious conversation about, should we not tell them? Right? But then what you have to do is, you have to respond. Right? Because no matter what you do, people are going to talk about it. People are going to out it. People are going to, it's going to spur on Brian Krebs is going to have an article about it. And by the way, Brian Krebs should not be your intrusion detection system. <laughs> right? I mean, uh, and I know companies that do it, right? Brian will tell us if we get hacked. Ah. It's kind of like I worked at this company that remained nameless, Blue Cross of Florida. And um, two groups of FBI agents showed up on the same day to arrest people. They met in the parking lot. 
The one group was bringing the guy out, perp walking him, right? I was one of the people walking out with them. I was not the perp walked person, just to be clear, right? As we're all walking out, another group of FBI agents walked in. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, we got this guy. What are you guys? Oh, we're getting another guy. Oh, what? really? Oh, this is this weird guy. We should have carpooled. But <laughs> both cases, Blue Cross had no idea this was happening. It was FBI IDS, right? That's not how you want to run. So you want to be able to respond. You want to be prepared. You want to know who is going to respond. What is your answer? Are you going to do a press release? Do you? Do you know who gets to talk about it? And oh, by the way, if you're the people that have the SQL injection flaw on your website, do you have clear lines of communication from the outside world? Good friend of mine, Tom Liston, runs a honeypot. It's really fun because every once in a while I log into it and leave him messages. But um, <laughs> I keep threatening to out the address of his honeypot in one of these talks, but it's not today. But, right, and he reaches out to companies all the time and says, hey, your website has been hacked. It's hosting Cialis ads, which I don't know anybody who buys Cialis from a website. I, what? I don't know anybody who buys Cialis. No, it doesn't matter. But <laughs> I, told you, I never understood the Cialis ad, the two tubs. If the Cialis is doing its job, well, don't you want to be in the same tub? I don't know. But he contacts people all the time, and people say to him, my website's not hacked. Well, no, it is. Right? I'm, I'm on it right now. It's hosting malware. It's doing this. No. Don't you think my admin would let me know if it was hacked? No, because <laughs> they don't know, right? This is part of the problem. You need to know who to contact. Who, do you have an abuse act? Do you know how much it pisses me off every time I go look at a domain and it's got a private registry? I'm sorry, you're not that important. Get a spam filter. Because the who is registry is for me to be able to reach out to the person in charge and say, you've been screwed. Here's how you fix it. But instead, I get the private registry. I get to email GoDaddy, who never forwards on anything. They say they do. You pay for them to, maybe. right? And then we need to start improving. We need to start fixing this stuff. Do you know how much it irritates the piss out of me to test the same site every year and just basically change the date on the report? You know that vulnerability I told you about 10 years ago? You're still vulnerable to it. You know when I told you you need an abuse at contact and you still don't have one, or it goes into an empty mailbox that nobody checks? Have you opened that mailbox up lately? How many messages are in it? Right? We need to start getting better. We have to become part of the business. Right? If we're not part of the business, if we're not truly understanding what's going on with the business, we can't possibly truly give them recommendations on how to fix it. I'd like to see researchers doing that. I'd like to see more researchers looking at defense, right? Let's talk about how to fix things. Let's talk about how to stop things. Let's talk about how to make things better. Because as I said when I started this talk, and I mean this, we have kids. My daughter, Brenna, is going to grow up with a life of having other people have her identity. For the rest of her life, she's going to have to deal with the fact that other people are using her social security number. Why? Because a hospital screwed up. We can't fix all the screw ups, but let's try to get better at it. Let's make it a little bit harder for the attackers, right? When Gil and I are sitting there and we get domain admin rights on your network from the internet in 37 minutes, you suck. Let's make it two hours, okay? Something, I don't know. Let's do something better. Let's start building out some standards, right? I actually think we should start licensing. I know that's not a popular opinion, but how many people, let me ask, how many people ever worked at a fast food job? Do you have to pee in a cup? Yeah. I, almost every fast food restaurant I've ever worked at, I had to go pee in a cup, right? How many people here do serious security work? How many of you had to pee in a cup for your job? A couple, a few. Not many, right? How many people went through a background check, right? Did they tell you the results? <laughs> what were they looking for? We had a customer come to us once and say, hey, do you drug test your people? And our answer was no, we don't. Why? Because I don't want to, right? I trust my people. They said, well, to do this job, you have to drug test your people. And I'm like, okay. So we said, fine. We called the drug testing company. We had to look them up, Google, right? 
called the drug testing company. They're like, what do you want to test for? I'm like, drugs. <laughs> right? And the company's like, well, which drug test? And I'm like, shit, I don't know. So I called the customer up. Hey, what drug test should we be doing? Their answer was, we don't know. What do you mean? You're the one requiring it. So my drug test was easy. What kind of drug is a white powder you snort up your nose? Anybody? You passed the drug test. <laughs> right? Done. <laughs> Right? That met the standard the customer had. That's a problem. <laughs> right? We need to build up awareness. We need to have people understand what the flaws mean. We need us to understand what the flaws mean. We need to be aware of how the business works and how it impacts things. We have to have a true understanding of this stuff. And then finally, bug bounties. How many people here have a bug bounty at their company? Nice. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to put you on the spot. You raised your hand. And by the way, you're the only person in the room who raised your hand. Let me ask you a question. How much security testing do you do for your company? Good. How well do you fix things you find? Good. You deserve a bug bounty program. If you have a bug bounty program and I find cross-site scripting in the search box in your website, you fail. A bug bounty program should be, I have a built, well-done security process. Now let's go see what else we missed. A bug bounty program should not be the first step, right? Too many companies do it. Hey, we have a bug bounty program. Really? What other security do you do? Well, we accept bug bounty submissions. No, 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 other security. Right? What's your SDLC? What is your monitoring process? Do you have a handle on what systems are even on your network? Right? Start looking for real security before you start doing this kind of stuff. And then go do this kind of stuff, right? But if you're not doing security well at the beginning, why bother with this? Hell, let's be honest. If you're not doing security well in the beginning, why even hire a pen tester, right? If I come in and I find vulnerabilities, if I find MSO8067 on your network, right, you've wasted your money and time hiring me, right? Because you should be able to find that yourself. You shouldn't need somebody like me. Right? So that's my rant for the day. You know, I hope you guys have a great conference. And I really want you to think about how do we do better? How do we as an industry find vulnerabilities, find out where the weaknesses are, but do it in a way that we're not screwing the entire world for our own edification? Right? That's all I want to know. So thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy yourself.